Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto. Thanks so much for tuning in. And if you're new here and you like this kind of content, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Now, continuing the series with the Aprilia Touareg 660, which I purchased a couple months ago for long-term review on my channel. What you can expect from today's video is I'm gonna walk you through the first service of the bike, uh, install some accessories, and also kind of show you the dealership experience as I take this bike in to the dealer to kind of finish up the first service and install some dealer accessories. So a couple things, um, my voice is a little bit off because I've been sick for the past week. I'm still not better, but I'm too stubborn, so I just wanna keep filming and getting getting these videos done. But yeah, I am running a cold, and uh, also I didn't really gain weight, but I just have all these layers on because it's cold in my garage, so I'm trying not to uh, trying not to freeze out here uh, because it is winter in the mountains where I live. So um, the, the first service on the Touareg 660 is pretty basic. It's an oil change and then checking the chain tension, checking the basic operation of the bike. Now I'm doing the oil change myself, which I'm gonna show you here in a second, but then I have to take the bike into the dealer. Now why do I have to go to the dealer? Well, uh, because they have to reset the uh, service uh, in the computer to tell the bike that the first service has been done so that it raises the RPM limit. They also need to update the fuel map programming because they released an update for that to make it run smoother. So since I'm making that long drive, I figured I'm gonna have them install the OEM Aprilia heated grips and the OEM quick shifter at the same time. And I'll show you the cost for that because it's a little bit, a little bit eye-watering with the cost just because of the labor and stuff involved. All right, so to do the oil chain on the Touareg, the skid plate has to come off. So the skid plate is this two-piece design here. I've already actually broken the mount off on this, as you can see, and this is actually gonna go probably in the trash. I guess I should keep it though, if I'm being honest, but this is gonna come off uh, to get to the oil filter and the oil drain plug. Now, <clears throat> what I'm doing also at the same time is SW Motec sent out their skid plate uh, for me to test on the bike and feature on the bike. So look at the difference. <laughs> I mean, look at the thickness and the size and coverage of that compared to the OEM skid plate. That's dramatic. And I like the black. I think it's gonna help the bike look good. Uh, also today, I'm tackling the uh, SW Motec crash bar install. So on the Touareg, the radiators are pretty vulnerable because they're right under here. And I, you can see I have crashed the bike and dropped the bike, and I'm just lucky I haven't done any damage yet, but the, the crash bars are going to go here to offer some protection. So here's the oil chain stuff that I've gathered. I got the OEM Aprilia oil filter. I ordered that online from AF1 Racing. I've got my owner's manual here, which actually doesn't really tell me how to do the oil change, unfortunately. Uh, and I've got the oil. I'm using Castor Oil Power One Full Synthetic at, uh, 10W50. It's a JSO, MA2, and APISL approved oil. So that's the kind of oil you want to use. So first things first is to get the engine warmed up a bit, which means pulling my Jeep out of the garage. I don't want to run this bike inside and die of carbon monoxide poisoning because that would not be good. And then uh, we'll go ahead and remove the skid plate, get the oil change. All right, so the oil's draining there, you can see. So here's the oil plug, and hopefully you can see this on the camera. Uh, it's actually magnetic, which I like, and there's a little bit of shavings there, which you would expect. So oil filter's right here, really easy automotive type filter, and you can see there. So we'll get the rest of this oil drain, get the oil filter off, get the new oil filter installed, and then we'll put some fresh oil in the bike, and then we'll be ready to put that skid plate on. All right, so I got on the new oil filter and now I'm gonna refill the engine with oil. So I went into the manual, the owner's manual, which is useless. It's all in different languages, the text is tiny. All it says is the oil change is go to the dealer, right? So anyway, but you can figure out how to do the oil change and then it does give you the capacity, which is uh, 2.3 liters. And uh, it also tells you the spec of the oil, which is 1050 uh, 
JSO, JSO MA2 and, uh, and those types of things. So that this oil hits that. So we'll go ahead and put this in uh, using my tusk sort of uh, funnel here. I have to kind of do this with two hands. It's a small opening on the oil. All right, well, a couple hours later, due to the magic of YouTube editing, the crash bars and skid plate are installed. The oil change is done. So let me show you the crash bars skid plate real quick. All right, so you can see here the SW Motec crash bar and the SW Motec skid plate. I've actually been using stuff from this company for, you know, over 15 years, um, before, way before I did YouTube. Their stuff is great. It's a German company, really well engineered. So let's look at the skid plate first. So the skid plate uses a combination of frame and engine mounting. So back here, it's kind of hard to see, but inside there, there's actually a frame mount bracket, and then it's using a frame mount bracket there, an engine mount bracket here, and then it's using uh, down below here, which you can't see, which is inside there, is a bracket that mounts to the oil pan, which is a factory mount. So you can see here the coverage is really nice, and it comes up the side of the engine, it's also very thick, so I'll have a full accessory video on this bike at a later time. But I'm very happy with the design of this. I think they spent a lot of time really engineering this the best they could working with, you know, the mounting points they had to work with on this bike, which are pretty challenging. Now, as for the crash bar, I, again, I think it's really well engineered. It went on pretty easily, very, very sturdy and strong. It's not too obtrusive or too crazy looking. It mounts to the frame here, to the frame down here, and then there's a cross piece here. This could also be pretty handy if you wanted to mount some lights or some highway pegs and things like that. So yeah, I'm overall very happy with, with how this turned out. Let me show you from, from this angle here. You can see the crash bars. So yeah, I think they look good in a great well, well designed, and it didn't take too long to put on. Now this is gonna be featured in another video, but I also have their quick release side racks and their top rack as well. They sent all this stuff to me at once and I have their luggage to test as well, but that'll be featured in another video. One more thing I'm doing here that I forgot to mention is putting in an anti-gravity lithium ion battery with restart technology. This allows, this restart technology that they have, first of all, anti-gravity is one of the leading battery makers um, out there. This restart technology means that even if you discharge the battery seemingly all the way, maybe you leave something on, or whatever, what have you, um, the restart technology reserves some power in reserve so that you can still start the bike. Great technology, and they even gave me a remote harness um, to use that. So the factory battery is already a lithium battery, which you can see here is right under the seat. But I'm gonna pull it out and go ahead and put in the anti-gravity battery. Uh, the guys over at anti-gravity are really amazing. They reached out and wanted me to test a bunch of their products, so of course I said yes. I would test and report back. Some things I noticed about this right away, they give you really good uh, battery terminal hardware. They give you spacer blocks to make the battery fit perfectly. And I've never seen this before, but there's terminals on both sides. So you get a terminal, depending on how your battery is configured, you, you've got two positive terminals and two negative terminals. So depending on how it sits in the bike, you can use either one. I've never seen that before. I think that's really, really nice. Uh, don't you love getting up at 5 a.m. in the morning? But we get to go play with motorcycles, so I guess it's not too bad. So I'll get up at 5 a.m. I gotta leave at 6 a.m., which is five minutes ago, uh, to get to San Diego in time. It's a three hour drive uh, to get to the dealer one way. So three hours just to get there. So yeah, <sighs> that's okay, that's fine. We'll be fine. And of course it's raining and cold and freezing. At least it's not snowing. It could be worse, at least it's not snowing. So you can see it's dark, I'm in my truck. So we're, uh, you know, I'm lucky to have a nice truck. It's comfortable. It's good fuel economy. E Ram Eco Diesel, so I get like 28 miles a gallon on the highway, um, which is amazing for a full-size truck. So let's uh, let's just get this drive done, get to the dealership, and uh, get these get this stuff done to this Aprilia. And while I'm in San Diego, I, I should mention this, and I, I don't think I told my wife when I just left the house, but I'm also looking to buy a sport bike today. So maybe we'll get lucky and I'll find a sport bike that I, I decide to buy. So um, yeah, let's drive. Although it's barely dawn, a little bit of light coming through. You can see here the uh, Google Maps says 8.34, which would be half an hour before the dealership opens, but that's never going to happen because the traffic keeps getting worse. 
uh, on the route because of commuter traffic. So that's going to keep getting pushed back. So we'll see what happens. But you can see the, the rain and uh, things like that. But like I said, at least it's not snowing. So see bike back there, maybe. I don't know if you can see it, but it's back there somewhere. Well, it's actually, uh, I made it 15 minutes early, but it looks like the dealership's already open. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this bike unloaded. Um, and uh, hopefully they'll get started. They wanted me here right at 9 a.m. so they get me in early and get this thing started up. So we'll get this unloaded. It's not even raining outside. Look at that. It's just raining all the way here. Now it's not raining here, so that's that's good. So uh... I'm just grabbing a little bit of video if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for working on my bike. Of course. Have you done these heated grips before? Oh yeah. Is it, it looks like a pain because you got to pull all this stuff off. Yeah, because the connectors are right here. It is a pain. Oh yeah, that's why I didn't want to do this myself. <laughs> I just didn't feel like it. And I had to bring the bike in anyway, so. Yeah. But I did want the factory grips because then I can turn it on through the computer, you know? No, for sure. So this whole assembly had to come off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually still have to split the neck. Oh, because the har the harnesses go inside between, so wow, yeah. okay, fun stuff. Jeez, they could have made that easier, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and then, with just FYI, with these aftermarket uh, handlebars, yeah, uh, these have these grips have. They're a lock on, a lock on grip. Yeah, yeah. so I'm gonna have to pre drill holes for this aftermarket one because the stock ones have them pre drilled already. Oh, it doesn't just clip, you can't just. See how that hole right there? There's yeah, yeah, a hole yeah. right there, and there's another hole on this side. Oh. So it's basically, it, I have to, it's pre drilled and it's basically with a uh, threaded to screw it so it doesn't twist around. Uh, again, stock. And the bars have yeah. them already pre-drilled. Yeah, yeah. Where these ones have to mark it the, and then the drill it. Because the grips that just came off, they were just um, like a yeah. slip-on grip. Right? On this side, yeah. Because yeah. I remember I changed these bars out. Mm -hmm. And okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Thanks for letting me film. I appreciate it. Of course. Yeah. No worries. All right, so I'm here at uh, GP, the dealer where I bought my Touareg and they're in there servicing stuff. And uh, I am shopping for like a sporty street bike. And so this is kind of a candy store for me because I got a lot, a lot of the European brands. Of course, they have Aprilia, I've got KTM, they've got Ducati, uh, they've got uh, Moto Guzzi. What else do they have? Um, you know, they've got really nice hardware here. So let's go check out some of the options. So one option I have is like a Tuono 660. The only, it's an amazing bike and really probably the best in this category. But the only thing is that, you know, it's got the same engine as my Touareg, the same parallel twin 660. So I don't know, I kind of want something a little bit different. Although that's an incredible bike. Here's another one. I think this is like a different, uh, an upgraded model of the Tuono 660. And you get into the 1100s, the V4s, these get really fancy, really expensive, really fast. Here's another Tuono. There's a Tuono V4. Here's another 660. I sure like the design of these things. Close option I'm looking at here is a Monster. So this uses the same engine that I tested in the Desert X. The engine just feels, I don't know, just a little bit soft to me, like not as playful or kind of punchy as I was, as I was hoping. But I really do like the look of this monster. It has really good technology. The pricing's really competitive. It's Ducati, so everything is super high quality. You know, you've got nice switch gear, nice instruments. It's got six axis IMU. And I'm not an old school Ducati guy. I don't care about the lack of the trellis frame. I like the new design. I think it looks pretty, pretty cool and modern. So now we're getting into the Ducati Street Fighter. So these V4s are just insane beasts. I'm not gonna get a V4 Street Fighter. I don't need that kind of power. I mean, I want something to go on the track and use on the road as well. It's another V4. This could potentially be something. This is a Street Fighter V2. So this is a different engine than like on the uh, uh, Desert X and the Monster. This is a bigger engine more, but this is like 150, 160 horsepower. So this thing looks pretty good, but that price is a little bit more than I, a little bit more than I was thinking. You know, that's a little bit out of my budget maybe. So you can see they have the Moto Guzzi uh, V85s, the adventure bikes. Those are pretty cool bikes. They have a lot of them here. If you want to buy one, I know they'll make you a really good deal. Um, 
This is a hyper motard. I've always wanted one of these bikes. It's pretty crazy. It's like a supermoto on steroids. And this is the SP version. So, you know, upgraded suspension, wheels, stuff like that. This isn't cheap. This is like 18 grand, I think. But my gosh, what a beautiful bike. This And people say these things are just incredible fun. But this might be more of a play bike and I'm looking for something a little bit more grown up. So I don't know. Of course I could get a Multistrada V4, but again, that's way out of my budget. I'm trying to get something around like 12 grand area. Now I know a lot of you want me to get a 1290, but the thing is, I really like my GS. And I don't know if I'm ready to give up the GS because this is kind of similar bike to that, right? So it doesn't really fit what I was looking for. But they do have the S model, which is the 19 inch front wheel. This would be an amazing sport bike, sport touring bike. You could take it on a track. Uh, street bike, um, so yeah, that's an option. Yeah, but probably if I got that, why would I need this and a GS? I guess I could keep street tires on this and keep knobbies on the GS, but I don't know. What do you guys think? This looks pretty good. Put it down in the comments. What bike do you think I should get for a sport bike? So you can see the difference here in the R model, obviously different paint, different suspension, different bigger front wheel, different technology. The, the R model doesn't have the adaptive cruise. You can see this is the adaptive cruise module for the 1290S. Uh, so I'm at a different dealership now, a Japanese uh, dealership. They have Yamaha, Honda, Suzuki, all the normal ones. I'm looking at the MTO 9 SP. This is really kind of what I want. So the SP model, you get the Olean's rear shock with external reservoir and adjustability here, which is really nice upgrade for the money. Uh, and you also get a much more upgraded front fork as well. And you get cruise control. So you can see here, this bike has cruise control here, which you don't get. So here's a standard MT-09 and you don't get cruise control uh, on the standard one and you get a lower spec suspension. The seat's also different as well. So the SP is worth the extra 1500 bucks for sure. All right, we are done. We are good to go. So they were able to install the quick shifter and the heated grips. So let me kind of break down what this cost. Um, but I will say, you know, again, another great experience with GP motorcycles here in San Diego. Really fast service, really professional, nice. And the rate I think was really, really good. So to buy the parts for the quick shifter and the grips, was about, I think about $450 for both, right? So let's say about $200 for each, 200 for the quick shifter, 200 for the heated grips, might be a tiny bit more than that. I bought them online from AF1 Racing because they were the only Aprilia dealership to have them in stock. That is one issue, is parts availability. So a lot of the dealerships, when I talked to them, they said they just don't have these parts and it's hard to get communication from Aprilia on when they're gonna get them. So when I found out that AF1 Racing had them, they're out in Texas, I think, I ordered them online, got them delivered, to my house and took them here to this dealer to put on obviously they're genuine oem parts of course um, so anyway that was about 400 bucks and then the uh, install let me kind of show you here so i'll try not to show my personal info here um, so it was about 400 dollars in labor to have this done so really that's not too bad you know really i mean the fact that i didn't have to tear into the wiring harness and the headlight and the dash myself um, and normally I do my own work and I can't even remember the last time I took my bike into a dealer for work other than maybe a warranty replacement or fix or something like that. My whole life I do all my own work, but yeah, I don't know, time is more limited these days and this just made sense for me since I had to come here to have the service stuff reset anyway and have the new fuel programming put on. So I'm super happy. I got what I wanted, I was treated well, the price seemed really, really fair. It came in under what they quoted. On the phone they said it would be about 450 for the uh, three and a half to four hours of labor for the whole job. Um, and then it came in under 400, so I'm super happy with that. All right, I realized a few of you might wanna know how the heated grips work. So if you're gonna get the OEM Aprilia grips, they look like the standard grips, which I like. They're well integrated into the bike and you wouldn't even know the bike had heated grips other than maybe this one wire coming down from the this grip, <coughs> this grip here. Obviously I haven't put my bark busters back on yet. They're sitting right over there. Um, and yeah, I know I'm doing this out of order, jumping around. Thanks to the magic of editing, you know, that's how this works. Uh, so let's turn this on. So we turn this on and it's super easy to do. So you've got the, uh, you know, left and right toggles here. So all you do is you hit this right button twice to go from, so what I did there was toggle through uh, menu A, menu B, and then if you toggle again, boom, you're at the heat of grips. And then up and down, there's level one, level two, level three, and off. So the grips have three different heating levels. And of course, haven't really gotten out to ride and use them yet because 
more snow, wah, 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 snowing again. So anyway, uh, yeah, just got home to more snow. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, that's how they work. And then I think that's great. I really, really appreciate how they integrate. That's one of the benefits of kind of getting an integrated, um, you know, system here. So that's nice, I like it. So uh, I think that about wraps up this video in terms of the first service and getting some of these first accessories put on. Please stay tuned for more content with the Twarg 660. And as I kind of teased in this video, you know, probably some other new bikes soon as well. So thank, thank you so much for watching. Uh, comment down below, let me know what you think. If you have any questions, uh, what your opinion is on the pricing of this stuff and, and what you think of it. Um, other than that, uh, thanks for watching. Please support Big Rock Moto, ride safe, and I'll see you out there.